This lesson has been taken from the Mechanic Mindset training platform. If you want to take your diagnostics to the next level, download our new mobile phone app and sign up at mechanicmindset.com today. Use the code YouTube to get your first month of Diagnostic Coach absolutely free. So let's talk about vehicle networks and where did it start. So for CAN bus, we can go back to the 80s when it was developed by Bosch. And the first production vehicle released with CAN bus was the Mercedes W140. So the S-Class, which we can see on the screen here. Now, uh, I work for BMW, that's where I started, and the first vehicle that they used CAN bus for was the 8 Series, so the E31 so it was a little bit before my time but we did see quite a few of them on there. What we'll take a look at now is some of the different networks or the evolution of vehicle networks over time. What we'll do is start with the BMW E46 so I'm using the BMWs as an example partly because I know the vehicles but also because I have access to a few different bits of information that will help explain what we've got here. So this here is the vehicle topology and it basically gives us a layout of the vehicle network. You usually don't get access to the topology in uh, wiring diagrams, not in this format anyway. This is usually what you would get with the training material. So we used to make these for Jaguar Land Rover and we also used to make them at Audi, for example, when I was part of the training team. So um, if you don't have this available, then you're really going to have to make your own. So I will give you the opportunity to do that. So I have some uh, resources that you can use to have a go at making your own vehicle network topology. Let's take a look at this network topology. We can see here that we've got 16 control units in total. This vehicle was released in 1999. So we're going back quite a bit now, over 20 years. And we can see that for most part, it uses a single wire bus network. So this K bus here is, is one wire. And also, also this D bus here, that's also one wire. And I believe that this is what's known as K line, okay? So uh, these are all single wire networks um, which operate in the same way as CAN bus. However, we have got some CAN bus here. We can see that that's going to the powertrain networks just here so we've got the engine control unit the gearbox control unit and the um, ABS module so that was where Canvas really started for automotive the first communications were between the engine and the gearbox so that the gearbox could uh, send torque request to the engine management system when it was changing gear to make a nice smooth gear change. We then brought ABS in there and then they can share things like wheel speed data um, and also introduce functions like traction control as well. So this is the only bit of CAN bus on this vehicle. The rest of it is a different type of vehicle bus network. So we've only got CAN bus for the powertrain network. Uh, what we can see at the top is that all these networks go to the instrument cluster. Now on this vehicle the instrument cluster would be known as the gateway. Basically a gateway allows all the different networks to communicate with each other. You could think of them as speaking different languages at different speeds. Um, the gateway, in this case the instrument cluster, will then distribute those messages between the different networks. Um, we've also got over here some LIN bus. So LIN bus is still prevalent on the most modern vehicles today. And here we can see it being used on the um, stepper motors on the climate control system. So this over here would be the body network. Um, what we've got over here is the climate control panel. Uh, this here I believe is the rain light sensor. So automatic interval control, the sunroof, we've then got the body module with the integrated alarm and aerial antenna. And then down here we've got things like the seat module, parking sensors, immobilizer, multifunction steering wheel, some telephone and Bluetooth modules and the light switching center. You can see that the, the body network there is quite busy. We've also got these hardwire connections going up to the engine control module. So that's the hardwire connection for the immobilizer to the engine control unit. 
This era of vehicle was notoriously hard to steal. You you needed the key, otherwise you couldn't start the car. You physically couldn't do it. And uh, the multifunction steering wheel was connected to the engine control unit for the uh, cruise control switches. So let's take a look at the the next version of of that then. And this is the 2005 E90 3 Series. You can see straight away that we've increased. The amount of control units that we've got on the network and we've also phased out the single wire bus networks we've only got CAN bus and something else we'll talk about in a minute so we've got CAN bus over here we've got CAN bus here and this is also CAN bus there are a few single wire networks over here with LIN bus okay as I said LIN bus is is still available throughout most modern vehicles now however the main um, vehicle network is mostly canvas. With that canvas increase we've also got two different types of canvas network. We've got a high speed and a low speed network. Now on this vehicle the powertrain and chassis systems are controlled by a high speed network and the body system is controlled with a low speed network. Now we'll talk about high speed and low speed networks later on in the course. Um, it's basically needed when we've got more of a data requirement on a network, we would need a higher speed network. Think about your high speed and low speed internet connections. We're now not using the uh, instrument cluster as the gateway. We can see the instrument cluster is over here on the body can, combi. The gateway is now part of the junction box electronics. So as you can see, the gateway does change depending on the vehicle, the mod years, and that's something that you would be able to see on the wiring diagram or vehicle topology. And um, what we've also got is this other network in the middle here. This is called Mostbus and this is a fiber optic network. Um, they use fiber optic network on all the media systems so it stands for media orientated system transport and the reason they used it was for the kind of high data rate required for you know um, high quality audio and visual. Moving on again we then go on to the F33 series, which launched around 2012. And what we can really see is that the network load has been reduced. We've got more CAN networks. Um, the reason for doing this is as you add more uh, modules to a network, the network activity increases and there's more chances of messages clashing. So by putting less modules on a network means that we can uh, have a more stable network. You'll also find that on here with the canvas networks we've got, they only use high speed. So for the body systems now, we are also using a high speed canvas network. The ZGM is the gateway, so a slightly different module now uh, is controlling those messages between the different networks. And we've also got the addition of some other networks which are really becoming quite prevalent on the most modern vehicles, and that is Ethernet and Flexray. So here we've got a Ethernet connection between the ZGM and the head unit, so the infotainment head unit on MOST. And I believe this was mainly for programming updates to get that high data rate through to update the infotainment systems quickly. It was always the infotainment systems that used to take a really long time to perform updates. Um, we've also got another network then called Flexray. Okay, Now this isn't how Flexray is connected but it's just given us an idea of which modules are on that Flexray network. And again Flexray brings much higher speeds and data capability. So we'll also be talking about Flexray later on in the course. So both Flexray and Ethernet, we, we will start to see more and more as time goes on. So to summarize, you can see that it's more than just CAN bus when we're talking about uh, vehicle networks. We've got things like LIN bus, Flexray, Ethernet, MOST, and we'll be talking about all of those throughout this uh, networks training course. As networks continue to evolve with ever increasing load, we'll start to see that we rely on networks even more, especially as these cross network features start to become more apparent. We can see that on most vehicles now, we've got the ability for vehicles to drive themselves. Really what the missing link is, or, or what they're really working on, is the software and that sharing of data across the vehicle and we'll be finding that that's really reliant on the network. So in the following lessons, we'll take a look at all these networks in a little bit more detail. 
If you want to take the guesswork out of diagnostics, then come and check out the Mechanic Mindset Diagnostic Coach Programme. We have a whole online training platform which is dedicated to making things easy to understand and can also be accessed on our brand new mobile phone app. Benefit from the instant access of over 15 training courses and counting on topics like electrical diagnostics, sensors, engine management and emission systems, CAN bus and networks and oscilloscope. We add new lessons every month. Plus, you can download certificates for completing certain courses. We have a monthly live training session, which we record if you can't make it, and a private community, which is willing to help you with your diagnostic problems. So sign up today for your first month free using the code YouTube, and I hope to see you at the next live training session.